All right, it's Python and Harbor time, Lady Ada. Yay, Blinka. It is time. Okay, so if you haven't already, please, please, please subscribe to our, our Python Hardware newsletter. It's Adafruit Daily, and uh, we don't do anything with your email address. Um, we don't spam you. It is the biggest collection of Python on Hardware news in the world. Um, so last week we did the breaking news about the Raspberry Pi Python editor yep. online, which is great because we don't want to build an online Python code oh, editor. Oh, no, I do not. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Nope. And so we're glad that Raspberry Pi is. So you could use this for anything with Python, including yeah. CircuitPython and stuff like that. So um, it's a neat code editor. It'll help young people age seven and older learn to write code. Um, and it's for all their uh, coding clubs, coder dojos. Um, it's beta. They want folks to test it out and let them know how it works. Um, and it's not just limited to students, so everyone can use it. Um, and then I have a little bit of announcement before we talk about some of the things that we're working on right now. PyCon, we're going to have a couple people there. Katni and Jeff are going to be there, and here is what they want you all to know. Katni and Jeff will be hosting three days of development sprints from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday, April 24th through Wednesday, April 26th. Jeff will be joining on Monday. The location will be determined during the conference. Um, they want to let you know if you're attending, Please let Katni know ahead of time in the CircuitPython dev channel on Discord. Or you can come find them at the conference. We'd love to meet up. We're looking forward to PyCon 2023, and we hope to see you there, too. Um, this is where we meet a lot of folks, some of them we hired at Adafruit. So um, if you're going to PyCon, please stop by and say hi to our team. And then uh, last up, before we uh, talk about the um, kind of new thing that we're going to preview today. Um, I thought this was neat. This is a circuit playground using circuit Python to make an edible Dungeon and Dragons cake Yay. <laughs> that rolls dice. Cool. Isn't that neat? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I love, I love it. It's supposed to make it easy. It's supposed to be like the programming doesn't get in the way of your project. Yeah. Um, so in our circuit Python news, this was in our um, internal Slack today. Uh, Lady Ada's like, hey, Scott, could you get Circuit Python doing stuff with our new Feather DBI and this is Scott loves to drop drop hot images. <laughs> uh, so this is um, a, a Feather RP twenty forty DBI, the board that we released last week. Maybe it was the week before. Um, connected up to an HDMI monitor, and you see the native display I/O and REPL is on a it monitor. Um, this is cool. One, uh, we've always wanted to be able to do really good screen captures of CircuitPython. Um, like, you know, if you're, if you're typing stuff, so instead of taking a photo, you can actually now do a screen cap of Display.io, which is super neat. Um, second, it means that uh, people can do video synths and, like, cool uh, video projects that display on a monitor um, using CircuitPython. We have Arduino support right now, which, and it works great. Uh, but maybe you want to use a CircuitPython that you know and love. Um, all the sprite stuff yeah. and maybe the video games that, like, you know, we had um, the Pi Gamer people wrote some games um, for uh, uh, the Pi Gamer for a TFT yeah. display, but now maybe they could um, port those games over. So maybe I'll have Scott um, adapt his. The cool thing um, about this is we have no port. idea what people are going to do with it. Like, when I saw this, I'm just like, I can't wait till Toddbot can kick yeah. the tires on this because we finally have not only a screen. Like you know, directly from Circuit Python, you could you know, there's other there's ways to do things, and like you could look at a screen, but this is going out to TV, you know, a big a or big, a projector, or a projector. Right? I or mean, anything. like there's actually a lot. I mean, like it's like a lot of stuff has DVI input. Yeah. Um, also, you can of course convert DVI to other. You can convert to NTSC. Yeah. You can, like there's a lot of and converters. it's Python, so that just means like anyone can make anything and plug it into these like monoliths that we just have hmm. stuck to our walls that don't do anything most of the time. So, anyways. Um, we'll get the Very word cool. out. It's it's not on the nightly build yet. Uh, it needs to. No, be... it's not even. It's like not even pulled in. It's yeah, just this like, is breaking, 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 it's, breaking news. It's like whew, so hot. Yeah. Um, and you got uh, sixteen uh, bit, eight bit, four bit, two bit, and one bit. Um, so three twenty by two forty, but it's pixel doubled wow. to six forty by forty. But most of our displays are three twenty by two forty, so it's actually very similar. I think he did say that on the one and two bit per pixel color, so it's like monochrome or near monochrome. Uh, he did get full 640 by 480, but I, maybe oh. I didn't understand it. Okay. Um, don't forget, sign up. Aid for Daily. We deliver this every single week. And you'll be able to, of course, follow along on that project and more very soon.